Okay, so let me introduce myself. I am Prasant Mishra, one of the TA for the course of solid state physics, whose lectures are delivered by Professor Amul Kumar Das. Here today, I will try to give you a video solution for the assignment one, which contains the first five videos, I mean the videos of the week one. So, let us see what is the first question. Here, the potential energy of the two particles in electrostatic field when they are separated by a distance r is given by this phi is equal to minus alpha by r and beta by r to the power 4 alpha beta are constants and what is the question at what separation they will form the stable compound. So, let us see the solution. So, solution so assignment meant 1 and its solution. So, solution 1. So, solution 1, let us see. So, we have given that phi is equal to this question, this question is phi is equal to your minus alpha by r to the power 4 plus phi is equal to minus alpha by uh, minus alpha by r plus beta by r to the power 8. So, the thing is that the at what separation they will form the stable compound. We know that the nature has the tendency to maintain the minimum potential energy when they are stable. So, when they are stable the potential energy is minimum that means the differentiation of this potential energy with respect to the r that is d phi dr will be 0 when your potential energy P is potential energy is minimum. Okay. So, let us differentiate, let us find d phi d r, this is your after differentiating you will get alpha by r square minus beta by r to the power minus beta by r to the power 9, beta by r to the power 9. So, let us put it is equal to 0 put it is equal to 0. Uh, so, if you put it is equal to 0, you will get your alpha is equal to beta by r to the power 7 that is coming r to the power 7 is equal to sorry here 9 beta sorry here 8, 8, 8 beta yeah 8 beta. So, 8 beta differentiating here 8 beta by r to the power 9, then it is coming your alpha is equal to this. So, r to the power 7. So, r to the power 7 is equal to 8 beta by alpha or r is equal to your 8 beta by alpha r to the power 1 by 7. So, 8 beta by alpha r to the power 1 by 7, this will be the solution. So, option, which option is correct? So, option B is the correct answer. This is the correct answer, option B. So, this is the solution for first question. Now, let us come to the second one. The second question is what? You see the second question once that an electron in an atom revolves around the nucleus in an orbit of radius this point 5 Armstrong calculates orbital magnetic moment if the frequency of revolution of the electron is 10 to the power 10 megahertz given the charge of the electron this this is ok. So, this is the question related with the magnetic moment associated with an revolving electron right. So, we know that when the electron is revolving in the around the nucleus, it produces magnetic moment. So, now we discuss in solution 2. As the electron is revolving around the nucleus in an orbit of radius say r, the magnetic moment equivalent to this is i into a, where i is the current associated with the revolving electron and is the area of the 
loop the circular loop is the area of the circular loop okay so now this i is what let this electron having charge e is revolving with the frequency nu that means what that means in one second the electron crossing this point nu times so what is the total current the i must be equal to nu into e so i is equal to nu into e and then so nu into e into this is pi r square okay so nu is given something how much your it is given 10 to the power 10 megahertz so 10 to the power 10 from megahertz we convert into hertz this is nu and the charge of the electron 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb then pi and r square r is given in Armstrong unit so let us convert into a size that is your 0.5 into 10 to the power minus 10 whole square pi r square and after calculating you will get the result it is your 1.257 into 10 to the power minus 20 23 minus 23 ampere meter square thus correct option is option option d is the correct option d is the correct answer okay so i hope that this solution will satisfy you and if till you have any doubt later on you may ask questions in query by myself or my teacher will help you to satisfy answering your questions so now we'll come to the question number three the third question so let us come to the third question it is that the atomic weight of copper is this 63.5 gram the mass density of copper is 8.96 gram per centimeter cube we have to estimate the interatomic distance of copper atoms in solid space okay so this is the question now let us consider let as consider we have to find the interatomic distance of copper atoms let this distance is let the distance is a let the the distance is a so here the what data are given you note the atomic weight is given and the density is given so we know that the your what is density density is given that rho is equal to your 8.96 8.96 gram per centimeter cube fine so in one centimeter cube in one centimeter cube mass is equal to 8.96 gram now question is that if this is the mass then what fraction of the mole is contained in it we know that it is given already that the atomic weight is some 63.5 gram so in 63.5 gram there are there are there are avogadro number that is n number of atoms n number of atoms what is n it is the avogadro number so obviously so the simple unitary method in 8.96 gram there are n into your in 63 this much so in one one in one gram in one gram it is one by in 63.5 gram there is n so this is divided by 63.5 into 8.96 okay so this much is the number of atoms present in it and as we have assumed that the distance is a so the volume becoming 
so we can write a cube the volume occupied for one atom the atoms are arranged like this we, we assume in the structure each cube contain only one atom actually each atom is contributed by eight cubes and so per cube that is one atom so this is a cube the volume for the each atom into n that ever got the number into 8.96 divided by 63.5 this is equal to 1 centimeter cube 1 centimeter cube because what we have taken we have taken that in the row is the density of this per centimeter cube so that's why it is in a centimeter cube in 1 centimeter cube this is the mass as it is given and in 63.5 gram there are Avogadro number so in 1 gram this is divided by and in this gram this is so this is that thing so now put the value of the Avogadro the number which is here n is is equal to 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 this is the Avogadro the number this is the well known to us so by calculating all these you will get the result a is equal to a is equal to it is 2.2.3 am strong 2. Point, uh, sorry uh, yes oh i forgot to change the solution 3 this is the solution three. this is the solution 3 i have forgot to write here so this is coming is equal to 2.3 am strong so the option option B is correct. Option B. Option B is correct. Okay. Now the next question. The question number four. The question number four. It is also up to some extent. It is similar to question number three. It is similar to up to some extent question number 3. Here, what is written that the interatomic distance of atoms in gas at NTP is of the order of. See, the atoms in the gas, we assume that these are actually the point masses and not occupying any space. But the atoms are separated by a certain distance. This distance is randomly changing, but on average, if we assume that the atoms, the atoms are separated by a distance A, then let us see. Suppose the atoms are separated, these are the atoms, suppose these are separated by a distance A. So we form a cube, we form a cube of sides A. Now, this each atom you know I think you have already understood this thing that each atom is actually contributed by 8 nearby cubes. So, the contribution by each atom for a cube is 1 by 8 and in 8 corners there are 8 atoms. So, atom per cube is 1. Okay. So, the question is that NTP, at NTP, NTP the normal temperature and pressure. So, NTP the normal temperature and pressure that is your 0 degree centigrade temperature and normal atmospheric pressure that is a pressure of 76 centimeter of mercury column. Okay. So, at NTP, we know that the 1 gram mole, 1 gram mole of gas, 1 gram mole of gas contains Avogadro's number of electron atoms, Avogadro's number of atoms. Okay. And the volume becomes and volume is equal to 22.4 liter 
दैट इज इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी टू फोर जीरो जीरो सेंटीमीटर क्यूब सो विच क्वेश्चन वी डिस्कसिंग आई राइटिंग हियर दिस इज द क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर सोल्यूशन क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर सोल्यूशन ओके सो दिस इज द वॉल्यूम एंड द नंबर इज द एवोगाडो नंबर सो एज we have assumed that the atoms are separated by distance a then and in one cube actually the contribution is only of one atom because though there are eight corners and eight atoms but each atoms are these atoms are shared by the nearby eight cubes so ultimately we can say that the volume for one atom is a cube so what we can say this is a cube into 22400 cm cube sorry a cube for one atom and then have a got the number 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 this is equal to 22400 cm cube 2 to 4 0 0 cm cube okay so one thing again i will clear you that the atoms are not occupying any space here these are assumed to be the point masses but if we assume that they are separated by distance a and we form a cube of sides a then we see that for one atom volume required is a clear so so thus a cube will be 2 to 4 Zero zero by six point zero two three into ten to the power twenty three, and a will be the cube root of simply cube root of what? Cube root of two 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 four zero zero two two four zero zero divided by your average order number six point zero two three ten to the power twenty three. This whole to the power one by three, and after calculating, you will get if you calculate it, you will get the result. It is nearly thirty-three point seven amp strong unit. So the correct option is thirty. It is actually there. What thirty-three is not there in the option. but you have to choose the option which is the nearest to the correct so nearest to the correct is what 1 angstrom 10 angstrom 30 and 100 so obviously 30 is the nearest to the value which you have obtained from the calculation thus obviously the correct option is option c 30 angstrom Okay, so this is the solution of the question number four. Now come to the next. That is the question number fifth. Come to the question number fifth, and let us see what is there. The question number fifth question here. The question number fifth. The potential energy graph for atoms as a function of interatomic distance will be will be similar to will be similar to will be similar to. There are four graphs are given. Four graphs are given, and actually the potential energy changes with the separation with the distance, and the potential energy becomes minimum. For a certain, for a optimum value of the distance, if the distance increases from that or decreases, in both cases the potential energy changes. I mean, potential energy increases. So, the potential energy graph, what is given here, there are four graphs are given. So, among those, if you check the first graph, in the first graph. there is the nature of the first graph is something 
like this see it is becoming maximum so that's not possible because i have already discussed that nature always loves the to maintain the lowest value of the potential energy so this cannot be true and this is this has no significance okay because for a certain distance this is becoming zero which is never possible it is randomly infinitely increasing not possible obviously not uh, and the another one graph this is what this is also here becoming zero at certain value zero never possible for this so obviously the option the figure 2's graph must be correct figure 2 figure 2 you see this is becoming minimum for a certain value this is actually called r naught the distance for which the potential energy is minimum in this side this is the u the function of distance r and this is the nature so if the distance increases beyond that or decreases beyond that in both cases potential energy increasing as i told that potential energy becomes minimum for a particular for a I mean for an optimum value of the R that is unknown. So the figure 2 is correct. So option B is correct. Option B must be correct for the question number 5. <coughs> so now come to the question number 6. The solution to the question number 6. Solution to question number 6. Question number 6 is what? Actually, 6 is a information type question where it is the informa information type questions where it is given that your the for the orthorhombic crystal structure for the orthorhombic crystal structure the relation among the lattice parameters. So, this is information type questions question number 6 and the answer actually here nothing to discuss you have to remember this i mean for the this is the from the crystal structures and lattice parameter the seven types of crystal structure and 14 types of lattices and how they are divided that you know so option b will be correct that is your alpha uh, sorry a not is equal to b and not is equal to c but alpha is equal to beta is equal to gamma that is equal to 90 degree so your correct option is option B is the correct answer. Okay, next the seventh question. Seventh question is also similar to that of the sixth. They are also I think nothing to discuss. You see the seventh question that the find the correct statement in nature. There are some seven types of crystal etc etc. So, you know already that in nature there are 7 types of crystals and 14 types of lattices. So, question number 7's answer is what? There are question number 7's answer is what? That in nature there are 7 types of crystals and 14 types of lattices. So, answer C is the correct answer. This is the correct answer. Correct. Awesome. C is the correct answer. Okay. Now, come to the next one that is question number 8. So, come to the next the question number 8. What is there? Let us see first that the value of the quantum number LSJ corresponding to the spectroscopic term 2 P 3 by 2 is what? Okay. So, corresponding to 2 p 3 by 2 2 p 3 by 2 okay so for p the quantum number l is what l is 1 and s is half here l is 1 and s is half i mean for s the l is 0 like this it is 1 and half so, your L plus S that is equal to J, it will be put you 1 plus half that will be 
थ्री बाई टू एंड फॉर पी और भी एंड दिस इज टू फॉर एल इजिकल टू वन एंड पी इट इज टू सो टू पी थ्री बाई टू दाइज सो यू गेटिंग एल इजिकल टू वन ए सी इजिकल टू हाफ एंड वॉट एल्स टू फाइंड यूर टू फाइंड है ए सी इजिकल टू हाफ एंड यूर जे एंड जे इज इक्वल टू दिस इज एल प्लस एस इज थ्री बाई टू सो दिज आर द क्वांटम नंबर्स एंड ऑब्वियसली द ऑप्शन डी इज करेक्ट ऑप्शन डी इज करेक्ट सो एट क्वेश्चन इज ओवर नाउ क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन सो लेट अस सी वंस द क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन द पॉलीक्रिस्टल इन सॉलिड हैज नो ग्रेन बाउंडरीज ओनली वन ग्रेन बाउंडरी ओनली टू ग्रेन बाउंडरीज एंड मेनी ग्रेन बाउंडरीज what is the difference between polycrystalline and monocrystalline solid just you try to remember actually a monocrystalline solid which is rarely available in nature sometimes in very teeny salt particles or maybe teeny diamond particles that is available a polycrystalline solid is what there will be no interruption in the structure there will be continuity in the same manner throughout the sample throughout the material okay so there should not be any interruption or any discontinuity i mean if you see a pattern like this throughout the throughout the sample you have taken there is no no dissimilarities no difference same in same way all the atoms are arranged in the same way then that is polycrystalline and on the other hand if the arrangement is like this suppose suppose let us see one type of arrangement here okay <coughs> like this suppose let us see one type of arrangement here and then suddenly the arrangement has been changed like this arrangement has been changed like this suppose suppose so there is an interruption so there is an interruption again after some time again may be another interruption again may be another interruption so that is the nature of the polycrystalline solid in single crystalline solid there will be no such interruption so polycrystalline and single crystalline okay again let me clarify once again a single crystalline solid means throughout the entire sample there will be no disorderness or i mean the arrangement of the atoms will be same throughout the material what you have taken and i told already you that in nature single crystal is rarely available which is available like in case of some teeny diamond particles or teeny salt particles but in general in nature what we get those are all polycrystalline i mean having the this interruption which is called grain boundary this is the this is the interruption called grain boundary so in nature what is the question let us come to the question polycrystalline solid has many grain boundaries polycrystalline solid has many grain boundaries it is the option d is the correct option question number which question we dealing with we dealing with the question number 9 it we dealing with the question number 9 and option d option option d will be correct so this thing actually if you follow professor das lecture here there he has also discussed very nicely and i think you have till doubt after the discussion of this you may throw question in the forum okay next the question number 10 so first let me change the change here question number 10 question number 10 what is the question number 
the question number 10 is that the relation among lattice parameters is given by a is equal to b not is equal to c and alpha is equal to beta and not is equal to gamma find the cubic structure here also nothing to discuss this question number 10 solution is option c option c that is your tetragonal <coughs> tetragonal option c tetragonal okay so now come to the question number 11 question number 11 question number 11 what is question number 11 copper silver gold and silicon are the examples of are the examples of copper silver and what copper silver question number 11 copper silver etc uh, copper for question number 11 copper silver gold and silicon are the examples of this is nothing to discuss here it is <coughs> the question number 11 option a is correct option a is correct you have to remember these informations for the for the some special type of uh, um, elements like so uh, so well known elements which are frequently used in our daily life like your gold copper etc uh, iron and uh, diamond that uh, common salt that is sodium chloride their structures you have to remember always because any time when the question will come oftenly those will come from these oil known which are frequently used in our daily, li daily life from those type of materials like copper silver the, mer the gold uh, iron etc so question 11 option a is correct it is cubic crystal structure cubic crystal structure cubic crystal structure okay now the next question question number 12 here the van der waals bonding relation is given for the solid argon and for the argon atom the potential energy curve is okay the potential energy curve is given by some expression let us let us write this expression first let us write this, ex this expression first question number which question solution we discussing question number 12 ok so the potential energy for this argon is given by u as a function of r the potential energy u as a function of r is given by your a minus a by minus a by a by your r to the power uh, r to the power Okay, it is written like this minus a r to the power minus 6 plus b r to the power minus 12. The values of a, b, these are the constants and their values are given. So, this is not very important. What do we have to calculate? We have to calculate the bond length of the solid argon. So, when the argon forming the solid nature, obviously, we must assume we must consider that the potential energy of the system has become minimum and already i have discussed in the some previous question that when the potential energy is minimum um, obviously the differentiation of this potential energy with respect to the function r will be zero so simply so simply uh, let us differentiate it first and put it is equal to zero so we will differentiate du dr this will give you uh, a 6 a, a 6 a r to the power minus 7 minus 12 b r to the power minus 12 b r to the power minus 13 ok so let us put it is equal to 0 put it is equal to is equal to 0 put it is equal to 0 uh, after putting it you will get what you will get that <coughs> your uh, 12 b r to, to the power minus 13 is equal to 6 a r to the power minus 7 then your um, like this so your simply then 
you know, 6 and 12 eliminating here. So, 2 b by a it is coming r to the power minus 7 by 13 r to the power minus 7 plus 13 ok minus 7 plus 13 that is equal to r to the power 6 r to the power 6. So, r is equal to your 2 b by a whole to the power 1 by 6 put the values of a b and then calculate you will get the bond length bond length will be 3.822 Armstrong. So, option which option is correct option B option sorry option yes option B that is equal to how much 3.8 2 to m 2 3.8 option b so this concept is already discussed in some previous question also and just matter is that of the calculation of the putting the values of your a and b okay so question 12 is over sorry some of the question 12 is over and now near the next question that is question number 13. So, come to question number 13. Again, it is information type questions where there is nothing to discuss. What is the question number 13? Come to this question number 13. See the another example. As I told that uh, you have to remember the structure for the some common materials. And like your here the question number 13 is giving that uh, zinc, copper, uh, cadmium, and magnesium are the examples of what? So, you have to remember those informations I told you the answer will be option D option D that is hexagonal this is hexagonal crystal system hexagonal crystal system. <coughs> hexagonal crystal system ok. So, question 13 answer is over question 13 answer is over now question 14 question 14 <coughs> question 14 let us come to the question number 14 the translation vector for a lattice is T is equal to U A plus V B plus W C. What is that U A translation vector question number 14 T is equal to U A plus V B plus W C. A B C are the lattice vectors. So, question is that here what is asked you see it is asked that it is representing only orthorhombic only triclinic only monoclinic or all of them the answer is very simple actually this translation vector may form the any type of crystal depending on the angle between a b c and the angle between a b c and the values of u v w like when both are perpendicular, you can make the cubical shape. When, when <coughs> both are uh, perpendicular to each other, I mean alpha, beta, gamma, 90, you may make cubical shape, or uh, when they are not, you may make this type of shape. And if you repeat it, you may reach to any point anywhere, you may, you may reach to any point <coughs> like after repeating in the same way, one by one. Okay. So, depending on the values of u, v, w and your angle between these vectors a, b, c, you can form the all possible crystal structures. So, obviously, it represents all of them. So, option b is correct. Option, okay, let me see, is it option b or d? I think it is option d, option d. So, option d is correct. 
Okay. <coughs> so when it is perpendicular to each other, it is cubic, something orthorhombic. If alpha, beta, gamma is different, like this. So this is representing any type. And if you repeat it, I mean changing the values of u, v, w, you can reach to the any point on the space. By changing the values of u, v, w and by changing the angle between a, b and c, you can reach to the any point on the space. So you can represent any type of crystals available in the nature. Okay, so the last question of this assignment, the assignment 1, the assignment 1, it is last question. Okay. The in atomic structure, maximum how many electrons can be occupied, can we can put feeling from the lowest energy up to principal quantum number n is equal to 4. So, up to n is equal to 4. So, for n is equal to so question number 15 solution. Up, when n is equal to 1, you know that maximum number of possible electrons can be occupied 2 n square. So, this is simply is equal to 2 into 1 square that is, is equal to 2. Now, put n is equal to 2 again 2 n square. So, this will give you 2 into 2 square that is, is equal to 8 for the third orbit n is equal to 3 for the third n is equal to 3 2 into n square that is again 2 into 3 square that will be is equal to 18 and for the next and the last 4 that is 2 n square again it will be 2 into 4 square that is equal to 32. So, as per the question add all these you will get 50. So, option option C is the C, option C is the correct answer, yes option C. So, I hope I have helped you to get idea why which option is correct and which option is not correct and till if you have any query you may throw questions, you may put questions in forum by myself or my teacher Professor Das will try to give you more clarification if you have till doubt. So, let us stop here and again we may appear in the next assignment. Thank you.